in uh, open your Bible with me to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19, please. Let's read all together. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up the standard against him. When the enemy will come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Please, Matthew chapter 12. 28. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can any man enter into a strong man's house and carry off his possession unless he first ties up the strong man? then he can rob his house. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are dealing with a subject today that he says, Jesus said that, but if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, we are talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said that if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come. I want to say that this week God has been dealing with me a very unique thing that I've not seen. Because all of us here today, we all are fighting a battle. Everybody on this earth, we are fighting a battle. And the battle in which you and I are fighting is not a battle with persons you and I can see. It's a battle with people you cannot see with your physical eyes. Now, most of us, are not familiar with the concept that there are persons who don't have bodies that are living on the earth. But as you will see in this subject, there are persons who don't have physical body and they are the ones we all are fighting against. <coughs> You and I need to understand that you are a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. But you live inside a body. And that body in which you are living in, it gives you the legal of authority to be on the earth. If you lose your body, your spirit needs to go out of your body, whether in heaven or in hell, because you as a spirit, you will never die. Your spirit just looks like you, it's a person, and your spirit is the true self, but your body is the house and it will go. But there are spirits who don't have bodies, and they desperately crave to live inside a person's body and they will live in that person's body without the person even recognizing or realizing that somebody is living in me. Please listen. Therefore, for you and I to be totally free is number one you need to identify is there another person living in me? Or am I totally myself? The persons we are talking today, they are called demons, evil spirit, impure spirit, or unclean spirit. And all these spirits, they have human personalities, as we're going to 
going to see from the scripture. They have human personality. Number one thing you know about this evil spirit or demonic spirit, the Bible gives them many names, is that number one, they have a will. They have will. Go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 43. It says, when an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through every place seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, who says? The evil spirit. I will return to the house I left. He calls your body his house. I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. It goes and takes with it seven other wicked spirits than itself. And they go in and live there in a person's body. The final condition of that man is worse than first. So you see, when we talk of demons, demons are different from angels. We don't have time to go there. When God created the world, the first book of the Bible is considered to be the book of Job. The Bible says when God created the world, when God, Job was angry at God at one time, and said, Lord, I am not so happy the way you are running this earth. I am not happy at all. And then God called Job and asked Job some certain question. Now, please go with me to Job chapter 38, verse 4. <coughs> Job chapter 38 and verse 4. God is saying to Job, where were you when I laid the earth foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimension? Surely you know who stretched a measuring line across it. On what were its footing set? Or who laid its cornerstone? Number seven. Why the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. So while God was creating everything, there was angels who were singing. Are you getting me? The angels were singing when God was laying the earth's foundation. Now angels, angels are not demons because angels, they live in the heavenly. But demons are earthbound. That means they live on the earth. A demon, a difference between a demon from an angel is that demons don't have wings. But angels have wings. For instance, you have like the seraphim. The seraphim angel, these are the angels that worship in the presence of God. They have six wings. They have two wings in their head. Two wings on their side and two wings on their left. And the two wings on the, on the leg and on the head, that's what they use to worship. And then they use the wings on their side to do service, to fly. But for cherubims, like Lucifer, or before he became Satan, he's a cherubim. But cherubim, they just have two wings. They are the ones that protect the presence of God. But what we are talking today are not angels. These are demons. Demons are believed to be creatures who rebel against God. Were pre adamite creatures who rebel against God. And their desire is to live inside a human body because God has banished them until the day of judgment. So they live inside a human body and then carry out their wicked and diabolic demonic plan. For instance, you have a demon of a spirit of jealousy. There's a spirit, you will see someone being jealous, but it's a spirit. The Bible says in the book of Numbers, let's go Numbers chapter, sorry, Numbers chapter 5, verse 14. And if feeling of jealousy comes over a husband and he suspects his wife, that she is impure 
or if he is jealous and suspect her, even though she is not impure, then he is to take the wife to the priest. That means, are, are you there? Numbers chapter 5 verse 14. There is a spirit of jealousy. When a spirit of jealousy comes over a man in the Old Testament, and the man feels jealous of his wife, he will take the wife and go to the priest. And the wife will confess. Because based on the man's suspicion, the wife will confess and the priest will write some curses on a cardboard and then wipe it up and put it in a bowl of water. And if the woman drinks that and she's guilty, her tight and her tummy will rust because of a spirit of jealousy. And you'll find out that even today in our present day, there are people who are jealous of the other with no reason. But it's a spirit. Sometimes even the wife who is jealous of the man. And therefore the man cannot truly function because this person is controlled by a jealous spirit that anything they see, they feel suspicious. They just feel suspicious because it is a spirit. There is also a spirit called the spirit of lying. First King chapter 22. By what means the Lord asked, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. He said, you will succeed in enticing him said the Lord, go and do it. There is a lying spirit that seduces people. A lying spirit seducing people. There is also what is called a spirit of distress. Now, when I call the word spirit, you need to know these are persons. Are you following me? Yes. These are what? Yes. Persons. There is a spirit of distress. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 14, he said, Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. So, a lot of people today are tormented with a spirit of distress. Stress is a person, it's a spirit. And no matter what a person tries to do and tries to get, when a person is under a spirit of distress, they never have peace of mind. No matter what, they never have peace of mind. There is also what is called the spirit of deep sleep, which is a spirit of dizziness. The spirit of this sleep in the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 10 is a spirit where when the work is going, somebody just be sleeping. It is when the work is being preached, the spirit of dizziness and this sleep just comes upon the person. <coughs> and after the message, the person don't know. One time somebody was telling me, Pastor, other church, I've gone to churches somewhere where they preach, I'm just sleeping. But the day I came there, the moment he started to preach, I, my eyes got clear. He didn't know I understand because one thing I pray to God, Lord, don't make me to be telling people things that they will get like scared. Because God shows me things. Even when you are talking, I know what you are saying. But you will be talking that, well, well in the church I go, if they are preaching, I sleep. But I came there, my eyes opened. But I will not tell you that's a spirit of deep sleep. Mm -hmm. But you see, when you came, you were delivered. There is also called a spirit of distortion. The spirit of distortion makes you to lack concentration. Makes you not to concentrate. Are you getting me? It distracts you. 
Go with me to Isaiah chapter 19. So let, let me just give you, I'm a teacher of the word. I must lay my foundation in the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah chapter 19 verse 14. He says, and the Lord will pour upon him a spirit of dizziness. Dizzy. Sleeping spirit. Then go with me to Isaiah chapter 19. Verse 10. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 10. The Lord has brought you over a deep sleep. Is it in your Bible? Deep sleep. Perverse spirit. Now, we're going to look into... I was just giving you those introductions to look into the Old Testament. But our real teaching today is to focus on the New Testament. Can I hear the amen? amen? Now, if you look at it, all the miracles that, were, that Jesus did was done in the Old Testament. For instance, the healing of the sick, the feeding of thousands, multitude, the raising up of dead. All these things were done in the Old Testament. There was nothing new that Jesus did that was not done. Elijah, Elisha, all the prophets, they did miracles. The only distinctive miracle Jesus did that was not done in the Old Testament was to cast out evil spirit or demon. That is the only thing that distinguishes the ministry of Jesus from the other time. And you begin to understand, as I go ahead, they even accused Jesus of being possessed by a demon. Go with me to John, 10, John 7 verse 20. Jesus was accused of being possessed with a demon. Now, many Christians today, you don't know about demons and evil spirits. But in those days, the people in those days, they were conscious of evil spirit and demon. Are you getting me? Yeah, they were conscious of it. But today, most of us today, we don't know our trouble. We don't know the source of our problem. And the demons, the evil spirit, they are there tormenting us. And I tell you, if a person is not truly delivered, no matter what you try to get and acquire, you can go to the biggest and fattest holiday. When you come back, the reality kicks in. The reality key. Until you are delivered, that you know I'm free from these things, can you have peace of mind and a restful state? Can I hear amen? That's why the demons are so angry. That if you hear these things, you'll be free. Now, in John chapter 7, John chapter 7, verse 20, John showing you what the people knew at that time. That we believers were not conscious. In John 20, John 7, verse 20, they said, You are demon possessed. The crowd answered, Who is trying to kill you? They were telling Jesus, You are what? That this man is possessed by a demon. Then again, in John 8, John 8, verse 48. John 8, 48. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? Is it your Bible? Who were they talking to? Jesus. You are a Samaritan and demon-possessed. And then John 8, 52. He says, At that time, at this, the Jew exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. They say, now we know that you are demon. But even John the Baptist, when are we possessed with a demon? Go with me to Matthew chapter 11, verse 18. Because today everyone in this church is delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 18, Jesus was telling the Jews in those days, John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking. And they said, he, he has a demon. They were conscious of demons. These were persons without body that 
demonize the people. And the Lord showed me something. One time I was praying, that's why from now on, I don't pray with anyone who is not in this church. Or anyone that's under my stewardship. I was praying with someone one day. As I, that's why the Bible says, don't lay hand on any man. So as I lay hand on that person, what happened? I realized that I was tormented. And I was saying, God, why is this? He said, that person you lay was not under your lordship. Please, don't allow nobody to lay hands on you, and you to don't lay hands on anybody if you don't know what laying hands on me. Because there's a transparency. He said, the fact that the person said pray for me and lay hands on me didn't mean that you should lay hands on the person because it's not under your pastorate. Are you getting me? So I realized that I had to deal with that thing for almost a month before I was set free. You begin to understand, brothers and sisters, that what we are talking today are that there are people you don't see that are roaming around. They are walking on the air. They are looking for a house to live inside. And when a demon enters into somebody, he uses the parts of that person's body to carry out his demonic activity. If he's a demon of blasphemy, he will enter and use the tongue. That person will be blaspheming, criticizing, and gossiping. There's no way to know if that, that is a demon. If he's a demon of anger, he will enter inside a person. The person will just be angry. Anytime somebody says something, they are just angry. He's a demon of lust. The person will just find himself lost in, without even conscious of it. And he will say, any time you begin to sin. Now, I need to tell you that demons, they have personality. Number one, personality of a demon is that I told you they have a will, isn't it? Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. He said, a demon said, I will return to my house. Number two is that demons, they have knowledge. In Acts chapter 19, verse 13, go with me there. In Acts chapter 19, some people were trying to cast out demons. And they didn't have the authority to cast out that demon, which was inside the man. The Bible says, Acts chapter 19, verse 13. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits, doing what? Driving out evil spirits, tried to invoke the name of Jesus on those who, who were demon possessed. They will say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, the Jewish priests, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered. Who answered? It was the evil spirit that answered. He said, person. The evil spirit said, Jesus, I know. That means I acknowledge Jesus. Then he says, Paul, I know. He said, I recognize Paul. But now, who are you? <laughs> the demon star, the Bible says, then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked. May you not encounter that kind in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it will mesmerize you if you go doing it and you don't know what to, to do. So the demon in the person, he said, Jesus, I know. That means demons have knowledge. I know Jesus. I am not a Jesus. Paul, I've heard about Paul. But you, who are you? You don't have no source, so you will see. So demons have knowledge. Number two, demons, they are self-aware. They have, they know who they are. Go with me to Mark chapter 5 verse 9. Demons, they have awareness. Mark chapter 5 verse 9. Then Jesus asked him, Let's start from verse 8. For this was a case where Jesus 
came to a region called called Gennesaret. And there was a man in that place that was possessed with a demon and he was cutting himself. And nobody could restrain him. Can I hear an amen? Nobody could restrain him. So when Jesus came there, when Jesus came there, the Bible says that, verse 7, he shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God, you, will not, you won't touch on me. The demon was speaking inside the man. Now, Jesus, for Jesus has said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, Ask who? Ask who? Then, exactly. Jesus asked him, What is your name? He says, My name is Legion. He replied, For we are many. That means the demon was conscious of himself. That is why it's so important for you to know the demon by name. Once you know the demon by name, you have captured that demon. Once you identify what you are going through, you've captured the demon. So the demon says, Jesus, he says that, Jesus said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion. That means, Legion means we are many. There were almost 2,000 to 4,000 demons inside that man. And the demon had to negotiate with Jesus that don't send us out of this region. He said, send us to the pigs. And I don't know why Jesus had to send them to the pigs. So Jesus told the demon, go to the pigs. And the demons went and entered into the pigs. And 2,000 pigs ran into the sea. And they were all drowned. Now, when I see that, I begin to understand. How can almost 2,000 demons inside a human being and the man is still not that the man was mad. But all the pigs died. You can understand the power of a human body to contain things. You don't know what people are carrying. But the pigs died. And after the people who live in that region came and saw what had done, what did they do? They said, Jesus, get out of this place. Get out of this place. Get out of this place. Because demons will control the mind of people. Number three, I said number one is that demons, they have will. Number two, they have knowledge. Number three, they have self-awareness. Number three, number four is that demons, they have emotion. Demons are afraid. The Bible says in John, in James 2, verse 19, it says that, but you you believe that there is one God, good. Even demons believe that and tremble. <laughs> so your believing is not enough. You must act your faith. Are you getting me? Yeah. Demons also believe. Is it in your Bible? Yeah. Demons also, they have emotion. That's why when, when as I'm teaching you sometimes, you begin to see when you know what what the Lord has shown me, and you begin to come, the demons, they begin to tremble. They tremble at you. Why? Because you have the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. They tremble at you. But the thing is that, since many people have not been taught, you, many children of God are instead afraid of demons. Instead, demons should be the one we should be afraid. We should be going to the camp of the enemy and taking territory for the kingdom. Because there's a demon, a spirit of witchcraft, which is a spirit of rebellion. And you begin to see in Acts of the Apostle, all the, all the danger the people of God faced was against this evil spirit. You are not a threat. Are you getting me? Yeah. It is this evil spirit. They will attack a man of God, attack his family, attack his world, just to stop him. But you will not know. So there is what is called. Now let's look at how 
Jesus dealt with demon. Please go with me to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1 verse 23 to 26. The Bible says, just then, just then, a man in the synagogue who was possessed with an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus, sternly. Come out of it. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a strike. And the people were all amazed that they were asked each other, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirit and they obey him. You see, that was the first time the people saw something of that magnitude. They had seen the dead race. They had seen multitude being fed, but they had not seen an evil spirit cast out of the man. Now, this man was in the synagogue. This man was in church. But yet, this man was being controlled by a person that this man did not even realize that there was something in him that was controlling him. But because of the power of the Holy Spirit in the body of Jesus, it flushed out the spirit in the man and the spirit had a confrontation with Jesus. He said, who are you? Have you come to destroy us in the, uh, before the appointed time? Because I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. It took the disciple of Jesus almost three years to even know who Jesus was. But this evil spirit, they know you. They know that. That's why it's called sometimes familiar spirit. The spirit that has been in the family before you were born. That demon has always been in the family. And when you are born into that family, the demon already knows your father, your mother, your brothers and sisters. So begin to take the nature of you. So until you are delivered, you begin to see that the same characteristics of your family, you begin to follow it. <coughs> but everyone today, will be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. You begin to see that the same characteristics, you will not understand it. That's why it's called a familiar spirit. It's a spirit that has been in the family for too long. And you come now, you say you want to serve Jesus. And the spirit said, your grandfather served me. Your grandmother served me. Your mother served me. Your father served me. But they were not knowing they were serving me. And yet you come, that you will not serve me, then I will battle against you. Because you are the one to change the history of this family. That's why you go through what you go through. That's why you go through what you go through. You will see a Christian, you will say, why am I going through this thing? Because you choose to serve God. Because one of the things demons do is to resist you from serving Jesus. And after you come to Jesus, they want to make your life ineffective in Jesus. That's why you can see somebody come to church, but sooner you begin to see the person smoking. Why? There's a demon of nicotine. When the person enters the church, they are itching. They have to go out and, and, and smoke or drink something. And you think that, why is this brother always smoking all the time? Why is he drinking? No, it's a spirit. You cannot just condemn him. No, you got to deal with him and pray and bind that spirit. And you want to see him release. Because the spirit that is controlling him, he can't resist it. Even when he tries not to smoke, even when he tries not to drink, when he gets his money, he money just go. He doesn't know how to use his money. Because the evil spirit said, I will keep you and your family in poverty. And they spend all the money. And you see, he's working. But how can he be working but no money? Why? A demon said, this family, nobody will make it financially. As their money comes in, I spend it, I spend it, I spend it. They work, they get job, but nothing. They work, nothing. Why? The demon of poverty has held the family grip. Are you getting me? So you begin to understand, brothers and sisters in Christ, is that there is also a spirit of heaviness. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. 
the spirit of heaviness, when it comes upon you, you feel heavy. This anointing today will lift us everybody in you in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody will be lifted. See, when you have a spirit of heaviness, it's a spirit of depression. Depression is a person. You will find someone all the time. He always feel gloomy. She always feel gloomy. Not that it's not like, but the spirit of depression will just bring a thought. He will just bring something that you think you are nice. You are, he brings a thought. Sooner or later, the person is depressed. And when the person is depressed, they have problem with their relationship and around. So I will ask you, why are you down? He said, why are you asking me? But it's not you. We know who is talking. <laughs> are you getting? If you don't know that, you'll be fighting every day with the person who loves you the most and wants to help you. If you don't know that, you will think that this person is your enemy. You will think that this person that is close to you, that is out to help you, is even your enemy. Because demon in disguise that you don't know your real enemy. And so the person who is to help you the most, you think is your enemy. But the real person who is an evil spirit is behind the corner, is behind the scene as an actor programming remote control. Today, any remote control program against your life, I speak as God servant, is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, one thing you begin to realize about demon is that they have three objectives. Number one, the demons, they are out to torment and to torture. When in hell, the people who torment and torture are evil spirit. Evil spirit, because they call them the spirit of deception. That there will be a spirit of deceiving spirit. Go with me there. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says, the spirit clearly says that in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow the same spirit and things taught by demons. I tell you there are some teachings today in the church that are demonic, but many saints of God cannot know. Why? Because many children of God don't even have the spirit of discernment. That there are doctrines of demons being taught today, but they don't understand. He says, many will depart from the faith and will be following deceiving spirit. Because the only way demons can do is to deceive you from the truth. So their aim is to, number one, is to torment in hell. When people are in hell, those who have experienced it, they will tell you that these creatures are there and they have talent and they will tell you, we told you, we, we were deceiving you, Jesus is not true, we were telling you that you were believing it, we, we, when you were thinking, you knew we were deceiving you, now you are with us. Because hell was not meant for man, hell was meant for Satan and demons, because they rebel against God. But man chose to go to hell when you reject the offer of God, which is Jesus Christ. And when they deceive you, they, they torture you in hell. In hell, they will torture you and torture you. You think that you are tortured on this earth? <laughs> you think that there is torture on earth? In hell, they torture. And it's not a torture that you feel pain. And one day the pain is calm. It's eternal pain. Because their goal is to deceive. Because they know they, they have already been assigned to hell. So their goal is to take you and I there. They will not take you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two is to keep you from knowing Jesus and to serve him. So, brothers and sisters, let me just go with the characteristics of demon. What are the characteristics of demon? The characteristic activities of demons, so that you can know whether I'm being in a control over a demon, because you can know number one, demons they entice. They are the ones that speak to your voice that, oh, look at somebody's golden pen at work, pick it up. If it was yours, somebody would pick it. And you pick another person's pen. And somebody comes, hey, this man has stolen. They call you a spirit, they start a spirit of stealing. So demons they entice people. Are you getting me? They entice you with, with
with things, they entice people. Demons, they entice. That means entice means they will look at, they will say, what you have. They will say, what you have is not good enough. Then they will bring another thing. They will entice you with all the glamour, with all the things. And if you are not careful, you will fall for that enticement. Because most of us, we want to see glamour, isn't it? So they entice us. They entice you. Number two, demons, they harass. They make you harass. Harass means no peace of mind. You are constantly harassing, harass in the day, harass in the night. Even when you sleep, you find yourself that you are not sleeping. You are harassed. And sometimes you see somebody wake up out of bed as if they have been worried. Bed that you are supposed to sleep and wake up fresh. You wake up out of bed and say, I'm tired. Tired? Did you not sleep eight hours? How can you be tired? You have been worried in the night. And you will hear somebody will say, I saw somebody enter the door, but they didn't see the person. I saw somebody enter this house, but you don't. It's a demon. They are persons. But the person will know somebody enter this room. So we don't see the person. But he has that sensitivity to be conscious. There is, I saw somebody open this door. I saw the person. But you never see. These are demons. I said number three, they torment with suggestion. They torment you with emotional suggestion. They bring your past into your life. They bring past memory, things that you should have forgotten. Ten years ago, five years ago, three months ago, and you keep on rehearsing. So through that means, they have a means to torture you through suggestions. Every one year in the name of Jesus, Every tormenting memory, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Amen. Every suggestion that Satan is suggesting to you, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Amen. Another thing about demon is that they compel. They make you and I do what you don't want to do. Demons, they make, because it's not you, it's a person inside of you. Making you, you don't, you say, I don't want to watch this movie, oh. The next day you are watching. You say, ah, but I don't want to watch this movie. But you are still watching. Why? It's not you. The person inside of you loves the movie. And it controls your body. You see, the things you don't want to do, you find yourself doing them. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I said something wrong. I'm sorry for saying that. The next minute you are saying it. You don't, we know what came over you. You see, but the person is truly sorrowful for saying it, for doing it. There's a demon of harlotry. I don't have time. Hosea chapter 4 verse 5. A demon of prostitution. That you find a girl or a boy prostituting. Even when they say stop, he will say, I will sleep, I can sleep with 30 men. And my body is still okay. Because it's not, the, it's not the person, it's the demon in that person. All they need is to be delivered. There's a demon of impurity. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2. A demon of defilement. A demon of defilement will sleep with somebody and defy the person's body. And then you find sickness. It has defied your body. And you feel dirty. But you know somebody came over me and slept with me. And the other person, your partner may not know. You, your, your, the next person will not know that this other person is having an affair in the spirit. And then they wake up in the morning and they are angry and they are tired. Why? Wow. It's a demon. These are realities. But sometimes the Lord, this week, God was dealing with me. Many people close their womb. And God said, from today, begin to open the womb for people to be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Begin to open the womb. When, as you are preaching, begin to open the womb. 
Because these are things that people don't understand. Eh? You will see the other person like that. He's a demon. And they defy. Go with me to Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2. Father, we thank you. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2. He says, On that day I will banish in the name in the name of the Lord from the land, and they will be remembered no more, declares the Lord. I will remove both the prophet and the spirit of impurity upon the land. The spirit of impurity is a spirit of defilement. It defies your body, it defies your thoughts. It defies your emotion. You are happy the next day, the next day you are down. You will see people, I hear people go on cruise ship. The biggest cruise ship that they save money to go to Bahamas and, and Bermuda Stango. In the ship, the, the demon will be telling somebody, go out of the deck and jump. Go out of the deck and jump. So, go in the water. They, deep, they will tell you, he hear voice, he jumped, he said, he has sent money to go for cruise. Because it's a person. You need to know there are people. One thing I need to make you clear is that there are people who are living that don't have body and they want to live in your body. And every family that you are born into, you will see that that family has been worshipping demons. Whether you are conscious of it or not, they call it a cutting background. But your father, they were going to seek which doctor. They were seeking medium. And through those means, they invited demons into the family. And you are born into the family. So you see that you carry load. Unnecessary load. But then, for instance, if you are the one who is free now and your children are coming up, then you direct them to the Lord. And those children will not carry those evil loads, those weight and body and yoke they carried. So it's not about you, it's for your generation. Can I hear the Number five is that demons they enslave, they enslave people with food. They embrace people with drink. You will find yourself after eating, you should be full. But you say, I, I, I'll still eat. You'll be eating. It's not you eating. Even the story I don't like food. You'll be eating and eating and eating. They have constipation. <laughs> you see? But you know that it's enough. But they say it's not enough. Me and your master over your body put more food. So they make you, they, they, they enslave you to food. They enslave people to pornography. Things that you say, I don't want to watch this again. I don't want to watch it, especially young men and young women. I don't want to see it also all men. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to watch this again. You don't want to do what? Well. I like it. Sooner or later, you find yourself. Watching it, and you say, Why? We know why. It's not you, it's a spirit. So, a man had an accident in America. He was driving a truck, and on his phone, he was watching pornography and killed many people. Because that demon, when it comes to you, even when you, that's why we pray. Every partner in this ministry on holiday, I pray, I pray, I'm praying. You know, prayer boy. Why? You don't know who is who. When you go on holiday, you don't know who is a man will be driving a truck and yet watching pornography on his phone that he has downloaded. So he killed many people. The demon just came upon him, he was watching it and lose control with the truck, kill many people. Innocent people lost their life. You see? So you begin to understand, brothers and sisters, that demons they also deceive. We talk about that. They make people sick, they make people weak, and they kill people. They call a spirit of slumber. That you, you, anything that you hear a voice and you cannot see is a person. A demon of slumber. The things that you love to do, you will not do it. 
But once you get engaged in the things which you don't love, you get energized. To read your Bible, you say, hey, I can't read the Bible for 30 minutes. But when it's another football match or anything, you can watch it till they don't. <laughs> That's when the energy arrives. Because they love those kind of places. <laughs> See, I, I watch football, but then they say prayer. Which prayer? I'm going to bed. <laughs> In person. Brothers and sisters, let's conclude. You begin to see that this is a very vast thing. So behind every negative emotion and attitude, there is a corresponding demon. Every negative emotion. So that is why you need to be conscious now. When a thought comes to you, you want to say something to somebody. You should sit behind and think. And think, is it good for me to say this? Is it good for me to write this? Then you are identified to begin to take charge of yourself. Are you getting me? Not that, that something just comes in your thought, you just say it. Something just comes in your mind, you just say it. No, you should think. What will be the other person's reaction? Because some people, your own is that if you ask somebody a question, answer me now. No, 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 no. You don't give the person time to think. <laughs> no, not answer now, no, no. Why are you not answering? You say, allow me to think. No, no. Tell me yes or no. So the person made a rash decision because they never thought. You see? So, you should be able to give people time. Not every conversation the person has to respond. Why not ask me? Mm. Okay, problem. <laughs> <laughs> you see, problem has begun there. Jordan need to give myself, okay, I find opportunity. Where I can come in now. And from that little spark, it goes to something bigger that you never expected. And then they start behind, they are clapping. This is what we want. We don't want this couple to be happy. We don't want these people to be happy. When they are happy, we are angry. Sometimes a demon appears to a man physically. You took my wife. I physically beat the man. <laughs> are you getting me? Sometimes you need to pray. You need to fast. That's why we say prayer fast. Because you are dealing. You go and take a young girl come with me. A young boy come with me. You don't know what you carry. You may carry another load. So you must be able to be spiritually strong to handle it. Because don't look at her like I just took her or I just took him. No, he came with baggage. Then very soon, they start to release themselves. <laughs> Because before you saw the package was so nice, complete, as we do now on Facebook, you don't even consult pastor. Which pastor? I saw on Facebook, Mary, whether pastor like or not, or so who? And you go there, and after you have prayer, you say, Pastor, please, oh. <laughs> so you need to pray and fast because you'll be dealing with issues. You'll be dealing with issues, and you need to be spiritually strong. Because you also have your own baggage. That's why I say in this show, we don't criticize nobody. Come as you are. When you come, the Holy Spirit will be doing His work. And be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. You see? Demons, they cause people in their mind. The battlefield is in the mind. They cause unbelief. They make you to doubt. They make you to compromise. To be forgetful, there's a demon of forgetfulness. They make people confused, there's a spirit of confusion that you cannot even concentrate, you just find yourself confused. Not, not concentrate for one thing. One moment you are doing this, within one hour you are putting food in the fire, the next moment you are making the bed, the next moment you are washing the plate. After you are tired, what did you do? The bed was there, the food was there, the clothes was there. But you've done everything, no particular thing. So the set confusion, you concentrate to too many things in, in order to distract you. That's why you need to be so definite in your life, every day in your life. And say today, next Monday, this is what I'm going to do. 
Because without that, they move to and fro to control people who are drifting towards life, drifting towards things. You got to be definite in your life. You must be definite. If you are not definite, demons control people who are not definite in their life, who never make decisions and say, I believe and this is what I believe. I'm not going to be moved because once they find that your mind is not made up, they begin to cause you to drift towards life. Drift in unbelief. And then you lack concentration. There's a demon that uses the tongue. They make people to curse. They make people to blaspheme, to gossip, and to criticize. And you find this in church going demon, people in the church criticizing one another. The moment they sit together for one hour, two hours, what are you talking? What? Is it the Bible? No. Gossip. Did you hear that sister? Do you hear that brother? Did he, did he? Your tongue, instead of God using your tongue to bring the word of God, instead of God using your tongue to heal people, your tongue is being used now by the evil spirit to criticize, to condemn, to gossip, and to use it for wrong. That's why you need to submit the members of your body as instruments of righteousness to God. Go with me to Romans chapter 6 verse 18. That's me. Run up. Romans chapter 6. Oh, I have a lot. How demons come in. We cannot finish it today because we are tired. <laughs> Romans chapter 6, verse 18. He said, Do not offer parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been bought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. This, for sin should not be your master because you are not under law but under death. Every part of your body that you use for wickedness, a demon is using, you use to criticize people because anyone who slander other people, whether you are a child of God, whether you are anyone who slander other people, because that was the number one part of Satan, to slander other people, gossip about other people, talking negative about other people. How do you have that time to be gossiping? You use that same mouth, which should be used as an instrument for righteousness to God. Demons are using it now to condemn and criticize and to gossip. So the word of God will never manifest in your, in your, in your mouth. Because every time you use it, Satan uses it. On the phone, you are using it to condemn, to criticize. Then the Holy Spirit says, you have not submitted your tongue to me. You see? Any part of your body, whether it's your sexual organ, whether it's your eyes, whether it's your ears, if you don't submit it to God, you will submit it to another spirit. And they will use that part of the body and carry out their wicked agenda. That's why you hear sometimes somebody will be sleeping. Somebody say they are sleeping and they find themselves somewhere else swimming with somebody, eating with somebody while you are sleeping. You see? So it's not you, it's to, for you to offer your body. We don't have time. But next time, I'm going to show us how these demons they come in. How do they come in? Because sometimes we make it, we give them room. Because sometimes when someone is delivered, you go back in that very thing you have been delivered from. How do you protect yourself now? Because you know these things better. Are you getting me? How do you protect yourself? So let's talk about condition for deliverance. Number one. Number one condition of deliverance is that you need to submit completely to the Lordship of Jesus. You need to submit completely. <coughs> Let Jesus take control over your life and over everything and make him Lord over every area of your life. 
Jesus is Lord. That means you say, Jesus, I'm making you Lord over everything in my life. Number two, you need to be controlled completely by the Holy Spirit and submit to the Holy Spirit. Let Him teach you and lead you and guide you. Complete surrender to Him and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Because any area of your life that is not being controlled by the Holy Spirit, a demon will control that particular area. So you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit. Number three, you need to put the whole armor of God. We don't have time, but someday we'll go through the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 to 17. You need to put on, as a soldier of Christ, you must have an armor of your life. The Bible says there are seven armor of God you need to put on. He said the bed of truth. You must believe the word of God is true. Can I hear amen? That God's word is true because Satan will use you through deception. You must believe God's word is true. No matter what I go through, God's word is true. No matter what is happening, God's because that word is what you use against the demon. So he wants to deceive you. So you have to put the bed of truth. That God's word is true because Satan is afraid of the word. Demons are afraid of the word because the word is the son of the spirit. So, number three, weapon. You need to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness of faith, not of works. The righteousness, even if you fell into sin, even if you did something terrible, don't live in guilt and condemnation of your past. You need to confess, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus now and forever because you, you know sin became sin for me. I am righteous, I don't care. Satan, you cannot bring those thoughts to me. I am the righteous. And a righteous man will walk in boldness and in victory once you understand your righteousness because the enemy will use your guilt to condemn you. Get to me? There is now no condemnation. So he uses, so you must believe you are righteous. You must believe you are righteous. You are the righteousness of God. Nobody should condemn you. And you should not condemn yourself also. Because Satan uses guilt to torment a lot of Christians. And then you need to take in what is called the sword of the spirit, the word of God, the shield of faith. We go through those weapons. And when you handle them, you can defeat the devil. Number, number four, you need to confess. You don't confess to a man. You need to take some time for yourself and go in your own and confess your sins to God. And say, Lord, you are the only one to deliver me. I confess my sin. I hear yourself confess that sin to God. God knows, but he wants you to confess. Many of the time, we are living because we have not confessed. Confess any known sin of yourself or your ancestors. Then, the next thing, number five, is you need to forgive. The Bible says if you don't forgive, God will give you to also demons to torment. Many Christians are living today because they don't forgive any other person. Unforgiveness will keep you in total torture. You need to forgive. Because you and I as also sin, we need to forgive. Can I hear amen? And you need to forgive and forget. You don't forgive and say, oh, I still remember those people are, are forgiving more. I still remember what you did. No, when you forgive, you forget. Because that's the same way God looks at you. He has forgiven you. He has forgotten about you. He looks at you as you are white as snow. There is no sin consciousness when God sees you. And that's how you should see other people. Yeah, forgive them and mean it and forgive them completely. Then the next one is that you need to repent, you need to accept the personal responsibility. Then this one is what I think everyone you need to break free from every contact of the occult. You need to get rid of all horoscope book in your house. I was hearing a woman talking of her son who became uh, a lesbian. And the man of God was telling her that you consulted a, a spiritist when you were pregnant. 
The old man said yes. So how did he do it? He said, I went to a spiritist and they gave me a pendulum because I wanted to find the sect of this child to know if it's male or female. So they gave me a pendulum and I placed the pendulum on my womb and it went left. If it goes left, it's a female. If it goes right, it's a male. Then the pastor said, you invited the demon into your child. That child became uh, homosexual because of the spirit. So, some of the time, because of the background of the awkward, and none of us here can say, if you look at your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, whether they didn't practice witchcraft, whether they were not in the occultic realm. So, we need to renounce those things and get rid of all occultic objects in your home. Anything which is not of God, get rid of it. You can go and pray in that home. Get rid of any horoscope, all those things, Anything that is connected to this demonic spirit, you need to get rid of them. I was watching why, how a demon came to a person. It was just on the internet. And the person was looking at another program and bam, something popped in. And the person started watching. From that, it was just a, like, they say, play the book of the dead. And the person clicked there. That's how they come. Those pictures are sent with demonic power. And he clicked it, and from that time, the person began to dream about them. From that picture, they captured this image. A cutting object, cutting things. Satan is using every mode of communication, and music is using to torment people. He's using every mode of communication in our schools, in our government, everywhere. So you need to cover yourself constantly with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to rise up. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? I want you to rise up. You are going to pray. You are going to pray. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any spirit. Any spirit. Which is not of God. Which is not of God. Tormenting my life. Tormenting my life. Tormenting my, my family. Tormenting my emotion. Tormenting my mind. Tormenting my career. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, that spirit out now.